Okay, without further ado, we can talk about voluntarism. The whole conference could be me and Derek talking about voluntarism for five days. And on Friday, we're going to talk about agorism, a st strategy that has to do with voluntarism. Let me introduce our next presenters. This pair, this couple, this dynamic duo are two very incredible human beings. I met them actually through Derek Bros at the first greater reset, maybe it was the second greater reset. And I heard him speak. I'd never heard him before. And I was like, who the hell are these guys? I like the cut of their jib. I sure like what they have to say. Well, me and Rebecca have since grown very close with them. We're working on all sorts of projects together. And you know, I'm a big 10X guy, massive action. Well, I think I finally met my match. These two are, well, of course, old Derek sure puts in a lot of work, but these two are doing a lot of work to improve the world. They're focused on community building, natural building. They got this crazy obsession with hemp, but I'm going to let them tell you a little bit more about the projects they have going on. Please give it up for River and Amani of Haven Earth PMA. Thanks, John. Thanks for that awesome introduction. It's an honor to be back here at the Greater Reset. And it's also an honor to be working with Rebecca and John on these Yay. bigger visions on how we return to the land. So we're really excited to be here. So we have a little presentation, and I think they're going to pull it up. There we go. So we want to talk to you about how we return to the land. And specifically, we are, as John said, quite passionate about hemp. We really believe that's one of the pathways to get back to nature. If you are new to us, you can learn more about us on our Instagram, Haven Earth PMA, and we do finally have a Telegram channel too, which is the Haven Earth Trade School. Um, Haven Earth is a private membership association, so we're focused on regenerative solutions with an emphasis on hemp. We support people looking to return to the land through empowered education, conscious design, and building local agrarian models. And, you know, River and I actually just met two years ago. We've gotten a lot done in a very short period of time, I must say. We've traveled to like oh, yeah. over a hundred locations, thousands of miles, and we've been meeting with a lot of people like all of you who are having this vision of returning to the land. And one of the things that um, in this time that John and Derek just kind of described, we are feeling this need to actually take action, but sometimes it's reactionary rather than responding. And so when we've been meeting pe with people, whether they're looking to just get on the land by buying land or they already have land, um, we're really helping to develop kind of like a strategic um, pathway uh, so that they can actually do it in a way that makes sense, that's in alignment with nature, with its, with listening to the land. So River is an eco-architect and designer, and one of the things that we've done when we go on the land is created master plans, which is really kind of like an infrastructure, listening to what the land has to say and how we kind of map it out. Yeah, it's really around kind of designing solutions that are going to help us as we move back to the land. And a lot of people are exiting the system because um, it's not reason. really functioning very well right now. And But they're getting land, and, and they're not quite sure what to do, how to start. And so really, we, we've been going around and, and kind of spending time with people on the land and really kind of being present with what's there on the land already, because the land tends to communicate in different ways. And really, we've been kind of utilizing this idea of biomimicry. I don't know if anybody's heard of biomimicry. It's about looking at nature's principles, looking at how nature functions and replicates itself. And that's really part of this whole permaculture movement, um, as you know, Permanent culture, which is permaculture, is really about using a design strategy to help us get onto the land in resilient ways. And that's how my background as a designer, I'm really looking at what's there already, what's existing on the land, what's there physically in that community. And I'm going to move to the next one. We can see uh, permaculture is a design system for ecological and regenerative living. And, and there's many principles to that, but what we're focused on is the shelter part of that. And I think that's one of the kind of overlooked elements of permaculture. Everybody's focused on how do we grow our food? How do we sustain ourselves? How do we care for our animals? And, and it does a really good job of giving us 
clues as to where's the best place to put things and how is the energy flowing on the land, how is water flowing on the land, how do we capture water on the land. But when it comes to our shelters, it seems like it's kind of an afterthought for a lot of people. Um, but, but fundamentally, that's where we're spending all of our time. So how many of you have a vision of returning to the land? Yeah, Just I thought most of the room. <laughs> So one of the things that happens, um, and maybe you can share a little bit about your time in Russia, um, specifically mm -hmm. how it kind of contrasts to being here in the States, because one of the obstacles we come up against is the system. And Haven Earth is really a bridge between the two worlds, is how we see it, because we still need to operate in the old system while we're building out the new. Yeah. I spent quite a bit of time in Russia, and this is obviously not Russia. But um, going around the Anastasia communities there, and there was like over 600 communities started in the 90s. There's kind of a return to the land kind of mentality. But, you know, uh, one thing that they would do to get to land, and they had kind of similar principles as to permaculture. This is if you read the Anastasia Bringing Cedars books, um, was really about how to get on land and, and develop the land, and de develop your growing. Um, and the first thing that they would do would build their root cellar. So they would dig into the ground, they would, they would cover this structure, make it with wood and make it watertight, cover it with earth. And they would literally live inside of there as they developed their, their land out and as they were building their bigger structure. But, but here in the US, we're kind of riddled with legislation and, you know, um, the building permitting process, the zoning process, the planning departments. So people are really struggling with how do I get onto the land in, in a fast way? When I have to go through all these processes, I'm going through a hemp house design in California and we're still, we're in the third year of trying to get a permit for a 400 square foot structure and California is probably the worst place in the world to try and get a permit. Um, but the non-permitted shelters. Yeah, so one of the ways that we're looking to get back to land in these kind of temporary structures as we build out the other structures, obviously, are the tiny homes and the container homes or yurts and RVs, and these are great starting points for how to get back to the land. But one thing that happens when we um, kind of do things in a quick way is that we often don't see think about the materials that are in those structures. And I think many of you are aware of the homes that we live in today are quite sick. The materials that we're making the homes out of, everything that we're putting in the homes. And so this um, idea of the sick building syndrome is quite prevalent. Um, anybody know anyone that has had any kind of mold sensitivity from living in a structure that's not healthy? So that's one of the big concerns that I've had as a mother is really the toxins in the environment. And, and, I, and I just want to add to that. Sure. The whole building industry in this country over the last half a century has been focused on sealing buildings as tight as possible. That is the standard. As you know, if you go look at the, the planning department, the building department, they're looking for how is water going to, how are you going to keep moisture out of your building? How are you going to seal this tight? They have the, you know, this whole energy star and the HERS ratings where they do a blow, door blower test on your house. So they'll tape up your front and back door and they'll put a fan there and see if any air leaks out of your house. As if it's a bad thing to have airflow in your house. They want to keep the air out. And they want to keep you inside with all the EMF fields, all the, you know, all the toxins that are coming out of the carpets. And, and then just imagine a little bit of water. That's all that needs to get into that house. It has no way to escape again. So it starts to turn into mold. And then that just builds up in your walls. So we're creating these unhealthy environments to live in. And as Amani's big into the healthy living, healthy food. Yeah, I ran an organic cafe for a decade where I homeschooled my six children, so I'm really passionate about eating the most nutrient-dense, mineral-rich food on the planet. But a lot of times when we look at this idea of permaculture and going back to the land, that's really the focal point is like, how much food can I grow and how am I going to grow this food? And we neglect the idea of the structures that we're living in. How are they healthy? And we kind of make shortcuts on some of the materials that we're using, um, whether it's what's going in it, the paint and the carpets, but really... What I've learned from being with River is it's actually the building materials itself. And I always thought as a mom, I had to replace everything. But what I've found out is that there's actually a better solution. And that's mm. by starting with a natural building material that's actually breathing. And that this is how homes were back in the day. Maybe the back to antiquity. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, if you want to move to the next slide. 
We're talking about... Well, then just to tag on to that. So this concept of how we dwell has been something that River has really shared with me. And, you know, looking at that, about dwelling, how do we dwell well? Yeah, exactly. And I love, you know, there's this dwell magazine and all these things out there about dwelling, but, but really fundamentally dwell, the word is already in there. Well, it's already part of the word, but we don't, we're not thinking about that. We're just, you know, I worked internationally. The last project I did in the mainstream world was the Ritz Carlton Hotel in Kazakhstan. And um, it was a LEED gold certified building. I don't know if anybody knows the LEED program. It's supposed to be the leader in energy. Uh, and I don't know, I can't even remember now. It's such bullshit, sorry. But um, <laughs> beep that one out. Um, but literally, I, I was project manager for the, for the project there, and they had me traveling all over in, around the world. I was in, in China, Vietnam, Turkey, Serbia, getting furniture made, getting things made, bringing labor in from Romania or, or Ukraine or wherever it was. And the project got LEED Gold certification. The whole system is rigged, as you know already, and it's nothing different in the construction world. They say it's an ecological building. It just looks like that in general. Um, so I left that whole world of construction in 2017, and I ended up building this project in California. And I'm not sure why it's not on the screen, but there it is. Um, and this is a hemp house, and we built this in uh, Northern California. And I was a designer for the project, and it was also my first physical project as a builder, which was really interesting. Um, but when I when I kind of left the, the mainstream world of architecture and construction in 2017, I wanted to find something that was a healthy solution that was getting us back to nature for real, not just not just pretending that it was. And um, I ended up going through Russia. I was in Africa, Turkey and doing all these natural building workshops. And it was only when I went to the mountains in Switzerland, I spent two weeks in a hemp house up in the mountains in Switzerland in the snow in February 2019 that I experienced what a real home was. We were there in the mountains, 85-year-old guy, Jürgen Hempel, who created hem the whole hempcrete building industry in Europe. In 1986, he built the first hemp house in France. And we didn't have heat on for two weeks. It was minus degrees outside. And it was like fresh air in that house every day. We were in shorts and t-shirts. So it blew my mind. So I started looking into this hempcrete material. It's mold resistant. It's really, it's, it's like these old buildings, like in Greece and Rome and the Colosseum, the reason them buildings are still standing is because they breathe, is because the lime and the mortar that they use to keep it together actually can wick the moisture out can get rid of the moisture naturally. And actually, lime has these things called free lime radical particles, which forever will self-heal cracks in the building. So they will take moisture in from the environment, and then they will self-heal themselves. So this is really a living building system. And as a lot of you probably know, growing hemp is really good for the soil. It's non-toxic. It's regenerative building material. And the other thing about this, it's super insulating. So it's a, it's a kind of a fibrous material which comes from the stalk of the hemp plant, and then we mix it with lime and some pozzolan binders, which create a cementitious action. And the, the walls of your building, they, they go hard in, in four to six weeks, but they're still curing for years. They're literally receiving information from the environment. They're regulating the indoor environment of your home. They're regulating the temperature in your home. It has a thermal mass quality too, which allows the walls to store energy so they can regulate your indoor environment. So you tend to have around in the 70s, a steady interior temperature in the house, plus healthy air for when you're sleeping. It's like an air filtration system. Oh, yeah. You don't have to buy it. And just all have to build it. Too. <laughs> and then obviously fire and pest resistant because of the lime. So we're talking about industrial hemp. Just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, not... I think there's a lot of, you know, kind of a lot of trauma around hemp and the cannabis industry and all of that. And not that we think that any of that industry is necessarily bad. We believe in the health benefits. But when it comes to industrial hemp, it's a total different kettle of fish, as we'd say in England. Um, That's the first time I heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's regenerating the soil. It's fast growing cycle. It's naturally organic and it's resilient. Uh, it's a resilient material and has 
How many Lots uses? of uses. Over 25,000, probably more. So here specifically, everybody's starting to learn more about hemp. And, you know, we obviously know hemp fiber. These are hemp clothes. Um, the byproduct of the processing with the dust is actually what they're starting to make a lot of the hemp plastics out of. And that's going to be flooding into the marketplace. People are starting to use this as cat litter and chicken bedding. So we're going to start a little hemp chicken bedding business if anybody wants any, because we have plenty of herd. We use the herd to build the houses. And that's the part that is coming from the center of the stock. So this is a truly revolutionary plant that is really here for humanity. And the part that I think is really profound right now is that this industry, the hemp, the industrial hemp industry is exploding. Like the trajectory of where we're going is kind of unfathomable. But what, what we talk about getting back to the land and finding ways to do that healthy living and in a kind of quick manner, we really need to look at systems that are scalable and duplicatable. River said it takes months for these structures to cure when we hand build them. And so we're really interested in developing models that are going to be able to be that solution to help get people back to the land quickly in these healthy homes. Yeah, because I think, you know, as we talked about earlier, during times like these, we tend to go into this constructive type of way. You know, we kind of want to run away from everything, not spend money and all of these type of things. But really, the best way for us to get out of any problem is to get creative, to be in that creative space. And um, it's, I think, this building material in this plant right now is kind of offering us an opportunity to kind of bridge into a, a, a new place, into a new world. But kind of interestingly, it fits in with the whole the greenwashing agenda too. You know, it's like Which carbon, we're not part of. carbon neutral and all of this because when they want to start taxing you all on your carbon footprint, the farmers the really house. like the idea that they can grow hemp and then they can resolve their tax issue. They don't need so so it's it's actually opening a huge opportunity right now that that hemp house in California we built in 2019 we shipped all the hemp in from Europe because there was no one here no one here growing it I mean they just legalized it in 2018 but what's happened since then and especially in Texas it's blowing up there's there's tens of processing facilities coming online across the country we're partnering with some of them there's it's just a massive opportunity right now. Farmers are incentivized to grow the hemp, which is regenerating the soil. So it's a it's a win 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 situation from so many different angles. Yeah, and and just on that creativity side. Well, I was just gonna say that that's true. That we have this need to constrict and like expansion is what we're really focused on. And this is right. I think this is great. Yeah, this this always inspires me, and maybe it's a little off topic or seemingly, but I don't know if anybody knows about Bauhaus. Some people. It's a. I, it was basically a. It was a created by an architect in Germany called Walter Gropius in Weimar, Germany. And if anybody knows about the Weimar Republic and what happened there, he started up this school in 1919, which was a familiar date for the um, a pandemic back then, which was a Spanish pandemic, flu, John, a Spanish flu pandemic, which led up to a war. Ironically, and. Um, Basically, the whole, the whole premise for the school was to unite the arts, was to unite the architects, the sculptors, the painters, and all these artists who had basically only been working for the, the elites in society. The, the regular folk couldn't afford any of that kind of architecture, or of these kind of things. And they wanted to bring the artists and all the creative people together to come up with a solution for society for the future. And they really believed that design was a way we could recreate a society in a better image. And I love this quote, together let us desire, conceive, and create the new structure of the future, which will embrace architecture and sculpture and painting in one unity, and which will one day rise toward heaven from the hands of a million workers, like the crystal symbol of a new faith. It sounds a little bit like the WEF. It sounds a little bit like Klaus Schwab and all of them guys. It's, you know, But actually, this was really about bringing it back to the people, doing creative acts for the people to create a better society. So it was about education and learning and creativity. And this is what we've been focused on. Here at Haven Earth, so it kind of sounds like we're in a similar time, right? And so one of the things that And they we... got shut down by the Nazis in 1932, finally. 
after they moved four times. So this was this was real. They were doing something that that affected society. So for us at Haven Earth, it's really important to have inspired action, and that really comes from creativity. Like we were saying, when we're not in an expanded space, we constrict, and when we are expanded, we can actually move into that creative space. And I love the way that River expresses it through his designs as an architect and as a designer. So um, we're really focused on making these kinds of design of healthy homes available to people. These are two of the ones, the one we built in San Marcos, Texas, last spring when we hosted our first hemp builder training. We've done a lot of workshops, but we haven't um, been, we just moved in doing the trainings the last year, right after the first exit and build. The other blueprints available are for the California house, but the ones that we're working on right now is the tiny hemp home. Um, and this was a little bit of a pivot for River because he's not necessarily believing in the concepts of tiny homes. And we don't necessarily like where they're, what they're trying to kind of let, lead us to believe about how we shouldn't be taking up space. However, as a structure to get us onto land as an ADU unit, this is a good solution. And we're making the blueprints available to anyone tuning into the Greater Reset. Um, through the end of the month, you can actually get this plan, whether you're DIY and you want to build it yourself or you have a contractor or someone who can build it for you. So you can get it 50% off with the TGR code. So you just go to havenearth.biz forward slash blueprints. And I just, I just want to say one thing, really. Yes. You know, I can work for high-end custom clients all day long. That's not an issue. But really, uh, we're focusing on trying to help people get back to the land in, in ways that are helpful, but also economically viable for them. Not many people can hire a private architect to design their home and then hire a high-end contractor to build homes, we're trying to create a model that's going to allow people to get back to the land and not just in an RV, which serves a purpose for sure, but overall, these are not structures that you want to spend your life in. So for those of you in Texas, we're doing a tour of the Yay. tiny hemp home on Monday. If you're staying in town, and that's from 10 to 12, we're about an hour south here in Kingsbury, Texas. So if you want to um, come and join us, we're going to be doing a talk and answering your questions, the tour, and River's gonna be doing a hands-on tamping demo and you can create your own hemp block. So um, find us later if you wanna do that. For those of you that aren't here watching online or in Mexico, we created a little video live from the site this morning because these are, as River said, breathing systems and they need to be watered while they're curing. So I captured... <laughs> Hey everyone, we're here at the tiny hemp home build site in Kingsbury, Texas, the future home of the Haven Earth Trade School. We thought we'd give all of you tuning in to the Greater Reset a little visual of what we've been working on. River is here doing the watering, the daily watering of our labor of love. How many houses do you get to water like a plant? It's a breathing home, it's a, a living system. As you can hear, it's also solid. It, this is a filter on your home. Really, when you experience this, you'll, you'll want one of these hemp homes for yourself. It's the evolution of natural building. It's the evolution of construction. This is the future. So if you want to get access to these blueprints or learn more about us, you can go to havenearth.biz. Yay. Thought we'd show it to you if you can't make it. That was live this morning. <laughs> we do stay busy. We do 10x everything. Well, I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah. really, it's about it really it's about empowering people, um, and 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 hemp's often that opportunity as well. Uh, it's it's a very economically viable thing to get into, um, and we that that project there that you just saw, we had twenty people uh, for two weeks in December, and they helped us hemp that whole structure, and they learned all the principles of hempcrete and the benefits where they can get it. The, the kind of design behind it. We even have a few participants in the audience here, right here, who was there for the two weeks. And then we have some others over here who came to our other workshop earlier in the year. It's great to see them. And it's... So our focus, both River and I, are is on education. Like I said, I homeschooled my children in my cafe. That was my classroom. And we do share that in common. We feel like empowered education is really going to get us to this new world that we're all building out together. So this trade school is really important because I think one of the things that, especially the youth of today, really um, 
require from those of us that are helping to lead the way is to offer that skill set, to offer those trades, to have that resurgence, just like they did in the Bauhaus days. So um, we we are launching. We decided we just officially moved to Texas a couple months ago. Yeah, John and Rebecca kind of convinced us. Yeah. That, um, but we're making Texas our home base for the business because hemp is hempening here, and we want to set up the the Haven Earth Trade School here so that we can create these opportunities for people to come in, have these hands-on experiences where not only are they learning the skill, but a lot of people think about getting back to the land to build community. For us, we kind of do it in reverse. We provide these opportunities for people to come together around a shared purpose, and through that, we build community. These are profound Our community experiences. builds itself. Exactly. Yeah. Do you want to say anything else about this? Um, well, no, I think I'll say doing the well. next thing. So for those of you that can't be with us in person, we've also launched officially today um, our online platform. We really do believe knowledge builds resiliency. That's the whole point of this, right? To be self-resilient, to be sovereign. So we're launching the Hemp Builder course online at seedstarters.net. And this is a compilation of lots of videos of River and other people. Sorry we actually, about that. We actually recorded both builds. Um, we're really big on documenting things, um, really inspired by what John has done in that way to document and make these events available to people online because we realize that there are people all over the world um, looking for solutions. And that's one of the things that really unifies us at this time. We have this technology and we're leveraging this technology to get the information out there. So this course is including the blueprints, it includes the um, a consult with River as well as monthly live Q and A's and over 60 lessons and 25 hours of video to really help people that have some skills. Um, yeah, this to is, actually. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say this is not just for anybody. You know, really, you should have some construction know skills. Know how to use a hammer. You should know how to use a hammer and feel fairly good around tools. And a saw. Um, or or maybe you're working with a contractor because the thing about this industry right now. There's not builders out there who, you know, you, as someone who's looking to build a hemp home, it's hard to find a contractor who would even do it. Um, they're scratching their head. They just know conventional stuff, and they're happy to stick in that reality. Um, but it's not complicated, actually. It's just about getting that knowledge and getting your hands into it. You can start to understand the principles around that. So, you know, it could be for you as a homeowner, or you might want to send your handy person there. Or your young, aspiring child. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and we definitely love to work with the youth as well to, to kind of bring them up into this industry right now because the trades are something that we're missing, I think, in, in the Western world in general. If you look to like places like Germany, they've still got a really strong culture of the trades. Um, and, and being a tradesperson in Germany is actually kind of a renowned status to have. Um, but in this country, you're kind of almost looked down upon like uh, construction workers. Um, so we're trying to shift that so that young people and, and people in general feel good about actually taking back that power to build our own homes again. Um, it's just another power that was removed from us as everything was kind of given to us on a silver platter, which we've now realized came with a lot of catches. And now we feel disempowered. So it's cage. time to get re-empowered again and through education. And as we're saying here, knowledge builds resiliency. So the other thing on seedstarters.net, it is all things natural building, but it's also off-grid homesteading. Um, this tiny home will be an off-grid structure. And we're also focusing on regenerative agriculture. So we'll be putting up courses. There's so much online right now, but we're really focused on unique things that are not yet available online. So some of you have seen Texas Ready. I know that um, they talked about them earlier today and yesterday. We've been working with them and we're capturing their data because they're too busy gardening, but to create a Mitlighter gardening course online because we feel like these are the kinds of information that people need. So we really encourage you to check out seedstarters.net and just see if there's something there that you need, you know, you would be inspired to learn because ultimately the future is in our hands. That's right. <laughs> You can hemp with your hands. Yeah. So one of the things, if you want to get more involved with what we're doing and join our PMA, our private membership association, you can do that as well. We only have about four websites, just so you know. Um, Havenearth.net. I am a little busy. 
But havenearth.net is our platform where we connect with our members, people that want to stay kind of more, you know, closer to us. Yeah, and if you want to get on our mailing list, we have a nice little thing you can text hemp to 66866. So you can just open up, send a message, type the letters hemp to 66866, and you'll automatically get onto our mailing list, um, which will kind of put you into our circle of information, and you'll receive our monthly updates. Sometimes more frequently, but not as much as John. I don't send out as many <laughs> emails as John. But havenearth.net is sort of like our social platform that we use to connect with people. That was a compliment, John, um, that we use to connect with people because there's a lot of people that are looking to connect with each other. Just this is how we're all here. We've all found that through these networks. And it actually operates similarly to Freedom Cells. It's just a little bit more focused on our niche area around natural building and helping people who are looking to um, either acquire land or have land. We're at the end. Yay. So we'd love for you to stay in touch. You can learn more at havenearth.biz. I'm going to say the last line. Let's build a healthy future. Together. Woo! Y'all rock! Aren't they great? Give it up, give it up.